Hey, welcome back to another video in our Android app with GPS. In this video, we're going to take our map and make it a little bit interactive. So when we show the map of where we've placed our pins, if I click a pin, we can actually do something with it. I'll show you how to make interaction. Okay, so this should be a pretty quick video. It's not really that complex of what we have to do. So the activity that we're going to work on is the maps activity and we are going to program inside of the just the Java code. All right, so let's um, let's do two things here. We're going to do a zoom in on the last pin that was dropped and then we're also going to add the ability to click on those pins. So let's come into the place where we're putting the pins on the map. That was on the map ready. So I'm going to have a new variable and we'll call that the last location. So this variable that I'm going to assign is called last location placed. And for the initial value, we'll just set it to whatever Sydney was. And then after we've got this uh, defined, I'm going to redefine it inside the loop. So the last location placed is going to be important because it's where we're going to zoom in on the map. And so every time we place an item in our for loop, I'm going to update the last location placed as lat long, which is exactly this one point. All right, so when I get to the end of the loop outside of the little curly bracket, I want to zoom in on that last location. So the method to do that is called animate camera. As you can see, there's several options for animate camera. So I'm just going to choose animate camera. Now inside of there, I need to have something to actually configure that. So the item that I'm looking for is called a camera update factory. Okay, so it's a factory design pattern. Go look up factory design patterns if you want to know what that's all about. And then if you look at the uh, options here, I have the first one called the new lat long zoom. And you can see that the parameter says I can have a lat, a long, and then a float value. So the float value is the zoom value. So the lat long value is pretty easy. I have that already decided. All right, so the parameters that I'm looking for inside of the new lat long zoom is the last location that was placed. So that's the coordinates that we're going to. And then a zoom value. I think you can go from anywhere from like two to 20 or some range like that. So I'm gonna pick a medium zoom, like 12. And I have to make sure that it's in a float, float value. So let's put a 12 F. This might be a good place for a constant value, but let's just put in 12 for now. Okay, I'm gonna relaunch the app and see if it'll zoom in on the last location that I clicked. Okay, the app is up and running. Let's show my waypoint list and it should show empty. Okay, so I don't have any items. Let's add a new waypoint, and let's see if it's in the list. Sure enough, we have something. I think that's London. That's what it says in any way right here in Trafalgar Square. And now let's go show the map. So it brings up the map, and sure enough, it zooms in, and we're right there in London. Perfect. Now let's see if we can configure a new waypoint. So let's go back to Grand Canyon University entrance, set the location. Okay, so it's now set there, close here, and this should update. All right, so I'm just going to wait it out. I'm going to see if we can get the location to update. It's supposed to update. Okay, so it takes a few minutes maybe, but as you can see, I now have Grand Canyon University. So like I say, in a real phone, it would work better. Okay, so it looks like I finally figured, uh, I got two different locations. This one's at 33, this one's at 51. We got two different spots. So let's go ahead and chose the map. And the second one that I chose was in, in Arizona. Okay, so if I zoom out a bit, you should be able to see London as well. And let's see, did I have something set in London? It looks like I did. Okay, so go around your neighborhood and set these pins, and they automatically should zoom in on you. All right, there's one more cool thing I'd like to show you. It's the uh, ability to click on a pin. So let's go back and add a new item here. So let's type in mmap.set, and you can see that there's a new option called Set on Marker Click Listener. That sounds cool. That means we're going to be able to use those pins as buttons. So the uh, click listener item that we're looking for is something called Google Map dot on marker click listener. So I choose new and goo and you get the help typing ahead and there it is. All right. So now we have a new method called on marker click and it has a marker. Now the return false here is kind of a strange thing. It's just something we have to add at the end 
I think it tells the uh, computer or tells Android that we're, we haven't actually consumed this click. It's, it, it's going to be used again later. I'm not quite sure what that is, but we'll leave return false as is. So I'm going to create a very simple routine here. I'm just going to count the number of times that this button is clicked, this pin is clicked. You could set it to do other more interesting things, but this just gives you a, a demo of how clicking works. So we're going to utilize a property in a marker called a tag. Now a tag is kind of a universal, flexible type of field. You can stick anything in it until you want. You can put in an integer, strings, objects. We're going to just use an integer. So I'm going to say, if, assign this value called clicks to be whatever it was in get tag. Now you can see that there's a problem here. It says you don't know really what get tag is, but if you cast it, you will now have an integer as a promise. So if it doesn't work, let's check on the second line to say if clicks turns out to be absolutely null. I mean, it didn't get work. It didn't get anything. The, the tag is empty. So if the tag is empty, then let's set the value of clicks to zero. After we set it to zero, then let's increment it. So we'll do a plus one, and then we will set the tag to whatever new variable it is. So it might be one, it might be 10, whatever, how many clicks it was. So the next goal is I'm going to have a toast that will tell us how many times that the marker was clicked. So I will put in a string for the text that says marker, and we'll get the title, was clicked, and then how many times it was clicked is from the tag. So this should tell us a new number every time we click it. All right, let's run the application again. And let's go ahead and set a new waypoint, and let's show the map. All right, here is our marker. And if I click it, and let's see if the click works. There it is. So at the bottom, I have a toast that says your marker was clicked three times and four times. Now, there's all kinds of things you can do with markers. You can set their colors. You can change them to different styles other than these generic pins. You can draw circles. You can draw lines. Maps have a lot of options. You can do heat maps. You can do uh, guided tours. So we're just barely getting started on the maps. And so since this is an Android class, I wanted to show you how to get into these different classes, but look at the documentation to see what the full potential is. So this extends our GPS demo and allows you to add waypoints, save them as a list, show them as a map, and navigate between a few screens. So very basic, of course, but it's a great doorway opening to whatever apps and imagination that you can think of. So good luck with your apps in Android and Maps.